Steve with MSpec Performance and this is Tech Talk Tuesday. Today we're out in the shop, we're going to go over a little bit of tuning basics. We're not going to get full into everything, kind of what I do, what I go through when I put a car on the dyno, how I get it ready. Got a Nissan Sephiro on the dyno today with an RB25 swap. I've actually tuned this car before. It had RB25 with the stock turbos in it and unfortunately he had turbo failure that um, took out basically took out the motor, took out his turbo. So this motor has the stock replacements that have the steel turbine shaft instead of the ceramic wheel in it. So uh, push it up to 15, 16 pounds and don't really have to worry about the turbo catastrophically failing, which is a good thing. Yeah, we'll go ahead and get into it. So first things first, you know, I'll do, um, if it's a car that I've not tuned, you gotta get the car running somehow, somewhat stable so that you can do some of the other basics. So, I have this to that point. This is just stock fuel injectors. We're on gasoline, stock replacement turbos, you know, uh, front mount intercooler kit would be one of the upgrades. That's really it. And it's on AEM Infinity. So that's, that's honestly it. We do have the LQ9 coil kit in it. And that, that's about it for the list of modifications. Got to get the car riding, running stable so we can do an ignition timing sync. For that, Put the car in idle, I will lock out the ignition timing at zero degrees. So locking ignition timing at zero degrees turns off any type of multiplier, any type of coolant temp correction, any type of transient throttle, any type of idle correction. Um, AEM does a lot with idle, uh, sorry, ignition timing and idle to help hold your target idle. So we, we want, we don't want the, the ignition timing dancing around when we're trying to set, set this. And what this is gonna do is make sure that zero degrees on the computer is zero degrees of engine timing mechanically at the engine. 30 degrees, 30 degrees, you know, whatever you lock that. I set it at zero, that way we don't get any discrepancy from the timing gun and everything can just be zeroed out. So from here, you may not be able to see this, but I have the timing gun on here and we're about a degree or so off from zero. So what I'll do is go to the computer. Okay, that's spot on. Next thing I'll do So after I set the timing, I'll rev through a little bit and make sure that we don't have a massive amount of timing drift as we rev through the RPM range. You don't typically see it with Hall Effect sensors. Um, this is an optical, they classify it as a Hall, Hall Effect sensor, it's actually an optical sensor. Nissans, you won't really see too much timing drift because you don't have a reference between crankshaft and cam, which is one of the flaws with their timing. So you don't get that delay, you know, on a 2JZ, uh, most other motors, they have a crankshaft sensor and then they have a cam sensor and they're, they're in two separate spots. You have a crank down on the crankshaft and cams up on the cams. So then as your timing belt runs through and you get timing belt stretch or deflection or you know revving through the range, you might actually see a little bit of timing drift and we can go in and account for that if it's there. And that's using uh, pickup sensor delay and different engine management systems, call it different things. but. We want to try and make sure that as we rev through and our timing is locked, that we that we hold that commanded timing all the way through. It's a really good way if you do have timing drift. Really good way to burn down an engine and and, and not really know why. It's a it's a hard one to find if you don't know what you're looking for. So that is step one. Making sure that mechanical zero is 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 electronic zero. So after this, we hop into the car and we start going through a little bit of driving. All right, so one of the neat things about a Mustang dyno is mode that's called vehicle simulation. Do 99% of my tuning in vehicle simulation mode. What that does, they've done a really, really good job of capturing the way that a car drives on the street and putting it on a dyno. So 
when I load all the details for a car in, and I can really set it to be whatever I want, but when I load all the details to a car, it has um, the vehicle weight, the drag coefficient over the car. You know, it will actually simulate, if you're at 100 miles an hour, it will simulate the load of that car at 100 miles an hour. So it's really neat being able to tune that way um, because where I have it now, I don't have to sample full, full throttle pulls. I don't have to do any, you know, rev up, rev down, start, stop. It's just, it's on. And as long as I'm driving, it's simulating real world driving, but safely stationary, not out on the street. So go ahead and review our maps. You know, we look, we have our ignition map, which we just synced everything up. We have our target air fuel and cut this down. For now, go back to bait to low boost. And what I usually do is I will go to these advanced setups and I turn off Lambda Control. Which Lambda Control is, it's a, it's a really nice feature to have. All, all engine management systems have it. Um, but it's not there to tune. It's not there to, to tune your car. It's there to trim kind of the gray areas in between, you know, with those perfect areas you can't get. It can account for some temperature stuff, just some stuff that you absolutely won't see on the dyno. So the way I do it is I turn Lambda Feedback off for the first part of my tuning. Then we'll go back and we'll see, and we have no correction going on now. You know, we're commanding a 14.0 air fuel ratio and we're, we're basically running at a 14.0. So that's close enough. And if you're watching here at all, you can see that we're, we're a little lean off of our target. So, so that's actually not too bad. So we'll go up to the next where we're tracing. Let's go ahead and get into third. So we're actually very close. Like I said, I've I've tuned this car before, so I didn't expect for it to be too terribly far off, but at least, you know, we can go through and give you give you kind of the basics, kind of the a simple walkthrough on on uh on tuning and getting stuff set up um in previous videos i've mentioned closed loop control and that is when we turn lambda feedback on or lambda control right now we have the computer trying to hit the target for us we have a range of rich or lean that we can be and once we hit those limits, the, the Lambda control will determine that it's an error or it's too far out. It'll turn Lambda control off and then you're strictly relying on your fuel map. This is why I say you don't want to rely on Lambda control to tune your car. I'm not going to lie. AM Infinity's Lambda control is extremely fast. You, you probably could throw stuff in there with, within 40% and get it. Um, and, and it would keep up on most applications until you start getting into some really, really high power. The problem is if something goes wrong, you have nothing there, right? If the oxygen sensor dies or has a problem, right? And the computer determines it to be an error state and shut it down. If you just were 40% off, you're blown up. You're not, you're not, nothing, nothing, nothing good is gonna come of that. So you need to make sure that your, your fuel map is correct before Lambda control comes in. What I shoot for whenever I tune, and it'll change day to day because the temperature affects things, barometric pressure affects the tune. But on the dyno, I typically shoot for a minus 0.01%, which is essentially nothing. I'd rather have it pulling just a tiny bit of fuel than having to add fuel. That's what I shoot for at the dyno. And whenever I leave, whenever I send a car off after I'm done, that is where it is. At all throttle points, at all load points, everywhere on the map, we're within 0.01%, which is essentially nothing. 
then I'll give Lambda Feedback some control so that in the winter there's enough control there to compensate. In the summer there's enough to go the other way and compensate. You know, typically they don't have any have any problems. We can do you know intake air based compensations, which we do. Um, coolant temp, uh, coolant temp compensations, which we do, and basically give you a, a perfectly driving car. You know, as best as best we can anyway. As we talked about before with closed loop control, that is the computer trying to hit a target that you tell it to hit. And you will go in and set up, if, you're, if we're talking closed loop with, with, the, with the Lambda control, we would go into our Lambda table and we have an air fuel ratio that we want at different load points. Telling the computer to say, hey, when, we get, when, we're, when we're at this load point in this RPM, I want you to be at this air fuel ratio. And the computer will try its hardest to put you at the commanded fuel ratio. So we have called proportional integral and derivative terms. It's a PID loop. Those are, we'll get in depth with this in a different video, but that, that PID loop is what hits your target, maintains a target, and doesn't deviate from the target. That's that is your, that's your basics of a PID loop. You actually have four components, right? You have your target, then you have your proportional, your integral, and your derivative. So we will, we can dive into depth into that later, but when we do um, target air fuel, that's closed loop, that is the PID loop controlling that. When we do target boost, right? Um, I see a lot of tuners that tune set point only. So when they're on the dyno that day, that condition, you know, they'll pop in 30% duty cycle on the fuel, on the boost control solenoid, and that will make, let's just say 15 pounds boost. Well, that was that day, that condition, right? So you leave and the temperature outside drops 30 degrees. And now that same duty cycle is making 20 pounds of boost and over boosting. So we use a control loop or, you know, a, a closed loop control to target our boost, but we can't just say, you have nothing to go by, I want you to hold 20 pounds of boost. We have to, we have to build our table to be within a certain percentage, then we can turn, in close, turn on closed loop and it will, it will target that. So on the dyno, besides just staring at the computer, you know, you listen to it, you feel what the car is doing. Um, you know, I'm listening for detonation. I'm also logging knock sensor um, data to see if we're having any detonation. Um, that you have to kind of take into account the type of car you're tuning. So if you have, you know, a fully forged motor with solid motor mount, solid trans mount, solid rear end, you know, everything, you're gonna have a lot of noise and a knock sensor is only a piezo microphone. It's just listening for noise at a certain frequency. So if you're trying to tune with that, you kind of have to set your own, your own base, I call it basement and ceiling, right? So you have your, your knock floor and then you have your knock ceiling and you, you have to set that up if you want to use some type of knock control. So we're listening for all of those things. Um, every now and then, you know, typical signs that you have a vacuum leak will be a really high idle. Let's say you're commanding the car to idle at a thousand RPMs and it just does not want to come below 1300 RPMs. Your ignition timing is really low. You know, the computer is fighting to hold it at a thousand RPMs. Might be a good sign that you have a vacuum leak. When I have stuff like that happen, I'll get out our smoke tester smoke test the car look for a vacuum leak typically find one and fix it um you know but that sort of stuff happens another thing that i see on the dyno and we've talked about it in previous videos we talked about um different spark plugs for different applications spark blowout spark blowout's a big one in turbocharged cars and where you'll see it is you know when you have too hot of a plug and the gap is too big if you're asking more and substantially more from your engine than was designed stock you're going to blow the spark out 
and that's why we go with colder heat range spark plugs as well as gapping the spark plug gap tighter and tighter if you have a really good ignition coil you don't have to gap the don't have to gap your spark plug gap quite as tight but for you know these stock these are lq9s but like the stock rb25 coils are not notoriously strong coils at all in fact they cause me lots of headaches all the time um, i'll tighten those down to like 15 thousandths to try and eliminate spark blowout but which i guess to a to a little side note or a segue when you're doing a build buy good ignition coils um, we run a lot of the platinum racing products kits this is not a plug for platinum racing products they just make a great kit right they're not paying us to say this stuff they have an rb uh, uh, r35 coil kit for just about everything out there and from switching over to those man ignition problems just gone they actually have on their youtube channel they have a really good um, demonstration of testing all these different coils it took them months to put all the data together and arguably the r35 coil is the best bang for your buck um, ignition coil out there other than getting into some really gnarly you know flamethrower type coils but so save your save yourself and your tuner some headaches and just get good ignition coils don't rely on 30 year old ignition coils to to make a thousand horsepower because it's probably not going to happen as always we i just mentioned the ignition coils right so there's garbage in garbage out okay if you have garbage information in your computer you cannot expect a good tune or a good outcome right if you don't have good parts if you're pushing them way past the threshold, you can expect desirable results from that. So part of the, 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 the biggest part in setting this up is making sure that your sensor data is correct. Make sure everything is scaled properly. Make sure you have the correct fuel injector data in the computer for it. Make sure you have the correct settings for your ignition coils, you know, coil dwell. I've never seen anybody mess with stuff like that. I do. Um, you know, we can adjust and fine tune with spray angle, you know, uh, with the injector spray angle to get some little bit better drivability out of the car. You know, those are things that just make for a really well rounded tune and they're important. All right. Again, thanks for watching. Uh, hit the like button, subscribe. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any questions, comments, anything you want to see or hear about, put it down in the comments. Other than that, have a great day.